everybody knows the name Gagarin as the person who was the first human in space. But how many people know about the man who actually got him there? Said he, uh, Korolov, who really was the architect, Ukrainian architect of the Soviet space program. Of course, there are many reasons perhaps why he is not known. First of all, that his name existence was classified up until his death. Uh, so he was never acknowledged. So that's probably one of the reasons. And after he was acknowledged, uh, I think probably people just didn't focus on that. What the, we'll have a short video that will talk about him and really uh, how he firmly established his Ukrainian roots. Uh, including the fact that the first song sung in space was his childhood favorite song, which was Ukrainian. So now to the video. Korolyov was a great son of Ukraine. He is remembered as the chief designer of Soviet Union's space missiles. Korolyov grew up in Nizhyn, a quiet city in the heartland of Ukraine. In early age, he got fascinated by a flight performance of Sergei Utachkin, the legendary aviator from Odessa. Now, his cherished dream was to fly and to make aircraft. <laughs> This song that he heard from his mother became his lifelong favorite. Many years later, Pavlo Popovich sang this song from his spaceship for Korolyov. That was the first ever radio performance of a song from a spaceship. Korolyov designed his first aircraft when he was 17. Later at college, he built and piloted gliders of his own design. Since 1931, Korolyov became a pioneer in developing jet-propelled aircraft. In 1938, Stalin's secret police arrested him on phony charges as a Trotsky supporter. Korolyov lived through tortures and a gulag labor camp. Then he spent more than five years behind bars doing R&D work for the military. In post-war years, Korolyov's bureau produced a line of ballistic missiles, but he considered it only a step to the bigger goal, space flights. For several years, he was sending memos trying to persuade the Kremlin to authorize a space flights program. Once it was authorized, in less than a year, Korolyov launched world's first man-made satellite and then the first manned spacecraft with world-famous Yuri Gagarin. The Kremlin exploited those advances for its Cold War propaganda. But Korolyov's name and identity remain top secret in the USSR. The Kremlin received an informal offer from the Nobel Committee to nominate the chief designer for the world's greatest prize. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev replied, No, thank you. This merit belongs to the whole Soviet nation. But the USSR was about to lose the Cold War space race. The Kremlin could not sustain it after Korolyov's death. He died at the age of 59. Likely due to consequences for an old my pleasure to introduce in the Gulag astronaut Heidi Stefanishin Pfeiffer. In 2012, we had the honor of uh, awarding Heidi and Kadenyuk, Stars of Ukraine. Uh, that was on the occasion of the 20th anniversary, I believe, of the Space Agency. We, through our programs, like to remind the contributions that Ukrainians make uh, to the world, be they from Ukraine directly or find themselves in other countries like Heidi. Heidi's resume is really uh, compelling and she is quite an accomplished woman. Uh, she's a captain at the US Navy and was also a former astronaut. She's had two space flights, five space rides, walks, excuse me, which totaled, I think 33 hours and 42 minutes. But for me, perhaps the most intriguing is that she is a qualified salvage officer and has uh, 
been a part or managed several major uh, salvage projects, including the one of the Exxon Houston off the coast of the Barbers Point. And then also she developed the salvage plan for the uh, Portuguese uh, who were trying to uh, salvage one of their Peruvians, excuse me, uh, trying to salvage one of their uh, submarines off the island of Oahu, Hawaii. She was born and raised in St. Uh, Paul, Minnesota, very active in the Ukrainian American community. She married uh, Glenn Piper and they have a son named Michael. Heidi Stephanie Piper has, has used her hyphenated name to remind as a reminder of her family's roots. And now it is my pleasure to turn over the podium uh, to Heidi, who will participate as well as moderate uh, the discussion. Heidi, thank you. Off to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nadia, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And good morning to all of our viewers and to our viewers in Ukraine. Dobry večer. Um, as NASA, or as Nadia had uh, mentioned, I am a retired NASA astronaut and also of Ukrainian descent. My father emigrated from Western Ukraine, from Lvivshina. And growing up in Minnesota, you know, spaceflight has always captivated, you know, children around the world. And I was no different, maybe just a little bit different because of the time frame. Growing up, you know, being six years old when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. And at that time, didn't think much of space. The one recollection that I do remember when seeing a space flight and thinking about it was in 1975 when NASA and the Soviet Union participated in the Apollo Soyuz test program where they joined an Apollo and a Soyuz capsule in space. And at the time I remember watching it and listening to some of the audio and thinking that, you know, I could do that mission and I can actually understand what they're saying. <laughs> Having grown up speaking Ukrainian, it was similar enough to Russian that even as a 13 year old, I could un start understanding Russian. But little did I know that that was gonna come and go. And eventually one thing led to another and I became part of the astronaut program and had the honor to fly in space and visit the International Space Station, do spacewalks. And even though I was an American, there was no doubt amongst my crew members and folks that saw me that knew that I was a little bit different than most other American astronauts because of that long first name, Stefanishin. And I was also able to take little memories of Ukraine with me. I had a small flag of Ukraine that I kept with me and took pictures in space. And you mentioned the songs in space and on the shuttle, there's the there's uh, wake up music every morning that's played for the astronauts. And on both my flights, I had a Ukrainian song um, play for me. On my first mission, it was a rendition that the words were Taras Shevchenko. My second flight, one morning we were woken up to that lively rendition of, of uh, another Ukrainian song. And one other thing I also had at NASA was the opportunity to meet Leonid Kadenyuk because when he flew on SDS 87, I had just started my career at NASA. And so when I first met Kadenyuk, I remember one of the things he told me is when he saw me, he says, I knew immediately that you were Ukrainian because of the way you wore your hair. I had long hair and my hair was in braids. And he told me that that was typical Ukrainian. And you know what? I have no doubt that there are going to be others in space, whether they are of Ukrainian descent as I was, or if there will be another Ukrainian astronaut. And so I think that people around the world are gonna see more astronauts. And because astronauts are typically what people associate with this pro space program, they're the ones they see and that Ukrainian name will continue to, to be in space. And next, I would like to ask 
Acting Chief Historian of NASA, Brian Odom, to share about NASA's international cooperations over the past decades and what the future cooperations hold. Brian, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Uh, you know, the mention of uh, Tsiolkovsky uh, and uh, Korolev, and, you know, and, and the importance that they play in human spaceflight is just incredibly important. And that's, the early years of the space age were characterized by competition. Uh, it was a paradigm of, uh, you know, a Cold War, uh, was born of that, of that post-World War II world. Um, major breakthroughs were accomplished by the Americans and the Soviet programs. Cooperation between the United States and Ukraine continued in 1997. Leniod uh, Kadmyuk uh, be, did become the first Ukrainian citizen to fly in space aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia as a payload specialist on that mission. Uh, incredible, important work that he carried out there, uh, scientific you know, space botany experiments uh, aboard the International Space Station. Uh, was certainly an important milestone uh, in the development of our, the relationship between the two countries. 